Welcome to the Baby Names Podcast. I'm Jennifer Moss. And I'm Mallory Moss Katz. And we're the creators of babynames.com, and we love dishing about names. We're thrilled that so many people tuned into our first episode last time, and we're super excited to have you listening today. We had people not just from the U.S., but all over the world. U.K., Australia, Saudi Arabia, Ireland, Canada, China, Singapore, Hungary, and even India. We welcome everyone who is listening to the Baby Names Podcast. Don't forget to press subscribe so you don't miss an episode. So this week, you know, everyone is talking about the movie Black Panther. Um, It was really exciting. I saw it last week. And it earned record box office for a President's Day opening. And of course, I had to go and look at the names. Mel, did you see the movie yet? Nope. Ooh, you're going to have to go this weekend. So these are the names from the movie. The lead character is named T'Challa. And that's a guy. And then the lead female role, played by Lupita Nyong'o, is Nakia. Ooh, I predict there's going to be a lot of Nikias in 2019. I don't know. I mean, it's a beautiful name, and it's easy to pronounce, and it's easy to spell, so it kind of follows our name guidelines. But to me, it sounds like the brand name Nokia, but who knows? It might just take off. No, I bet you a million dollars or at least 10 bucks it's going to take off. (laughs) I'll take the 10. (laughs) <laughs> I'll take that 10 buck bet and we'll see if it uh, debuts in the top 500. How is that? Deal. Okay. Um, other names are Okoye, Wakabi, Shuri, Mbaku, and Njobu. Are those real African names? No, not really. Now, I was curious about that naming convention with the apostrophe And I wrote our um, resident name expert, Cleveland Kent Evans. He's a professor of linguistics and onomastics at Bellevue University in Nebraska. Onomastics, by the way, is the study of names. And he said that that naming convention is actually West African. And the fictional nation of Wakanda from Black Panther is supposed to be East African. But, you know, Black Panther was created as a comic book first in the mid-60s by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. And there really wasn't an easy resource back then for, like, looking up naming conventions or African names. So they probably just made up names that sounded exotic and put the apostrophes in that because they had heard that somewhere. And it's not really even an East African naming convention. But they do sound cool, and I think they did a good job. What African names do you like, Jen? Um, let me see. I've always liked the name Nena, which is N-N-E-N-N-A. It's an Igbo name, which is a language and a tribe in southeastern Nigeria, I believe. And I first heard it from America's Next Top Model. There was a um, contestant on that. Nena literally translates to father's mother. I uh, had to look it up. And it's sometimes given to a child when it's believed that she is the reincarnation of her paternal grandmother. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's really neat. You know, that naming convention after parents and after relatives is very common in Africa, either actual names or like you said, you know, having it named after like mother's father or mother's Mm -hmm. mother, like I know the Olympics are over, but I'm still in love with the name Mame, yeah. as in Mame Bine, the speed skater who was born in Ghana. Yeah. I'm not sure how she got her name, but in Ghana, Mame means mother. Oh, cool. One thing I do want to say that on the website, we get a lot of feedback saying um, when I'm searching for names, you have the ethnicity as African, and African contains a whole bunch of different cultures and countries, and how dare you put just such a general, you know, continent name on there, but um, we do put African when you're searching for the name, but when you actually click through on an African name, we will tell you where in Africa that name comes from down to the tribe or the country. 
we understand that. So just click through on a name and you will see the specifics of where that particular name comes from. Yes, we always try to be as sensitive and as accurate as possible. Absolutely. So today we're going to talk about finding cool names from your family tree. I used two family names for my daughter, Miranda Margaret. Miranda was a surname on my husband's side of the family, and Margaret was our mom's name. Um, our sister Kate went with family names for her sons as well. Peter Austin, she used two family surnames, one from each side. And Mal, you were probably the only one who didn't use a family name for your daughter, Veronica. Where did that come from? Yeah, so I had to deal with a long and cumbersome last name that didn't go with much. I still recommend to parents who have to deal with that to just go with whatever your heart desires. Mm -hmm. I always loved the name Veronica. No, not from the comic books, but I did love a good Archie now and then. <laughs> so that's what we went with. She calls herself Ronnie now, too. And yeah, that was from the comic books. Oh, Ronnie. Yeah, definitely. Well, Veronica from the comic books wasn't so bad a role model. She's kind of cool. <laughs> and if she was popular. And if you watch Riverdale now, that's such a cool show. And I hope Veronica and Betty start coming back into style. That would be awesome. I haven't watched it, but I heard it's pretty wacky. It is. So you are the genealogist of our family. And so we're going to talk about researching your family tree. And if our listeners has not yet started that, where would they go to um, start building their genealogy and finding cool names? Well, the first thing you want to do is talk to the people that are still alive. Talk to your parents if you still are lucky enough to have them with you. Talk to grandparents and aunts and uncles and find out what are the names of the people that they remember? Mm -hmm. You know, they're the ones who are going to say, oh, yes, I have an Aunt Alice or an Aunt Fanny. I mean, <laughs> some of the names are funny. I don't even remember Aunt Fanny's actual name because we always called her Fanny. And that's a good point is that you'll find out cool nicknames, too, when you talk to the actual people that you won't necessarily see in family records. Exactly. You know, so one of the things you're going to want to do is talk to who's around, make a list. And then once you start your family tree on paper, you can then go on to online resources. There's a ton of them. Some are online, actually some are just, you know, software programs. But I personally like using the online resources because there's so many. And a lot of people have already started your family tree. For instance, just last night, I started a family tree for my father-in-law's girlfriend mm -hmm. and it turned out that 10 people already had her father on a tree already oh that's cool yeah it was really neat yeah and so immediately I could bring up for instance the 1920 census that showed that her father came from a farming family and what his children's birth dates were and you know you can also find ship manifests of when they came over from Germany or England or from wherever you can see birth and death certificates marriage certificates sometimes these things cost a little more not on the genealogy software necessarily but on the records databases for the states like the public records yeah exactly the public records yeah it's possible that these resources could have been the catalyst for all the old-fashioned names coming back into style, too. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, these sites that you can go and research your family tree and the family names, they kind of popped up in the last 10 years. And in the last three to five is when all these old-fashioned names started coming back into style, especially on the girls' side. For example, like both our grandmother's names are totally coming back into style, like Eleanor and Hazel. But, you know, Hazel has been a super popular name in the last two to three years. John Green used it for his main character in The Fault in Our Stars. But that's kind of a chicken and an egg thing. Like, did he use it because it was coming back into style? Or did it become popular again because he used it as a very beloved character? Who knows? 
Um, the same thing happened with Jennifer and Love stories. So you don't know which came first. Absolutely. And if you think about it, Mallory became a lot more popular when Family Ties came out. Yeah, definitely. So anyway, um, one of the things I wanted to point out, though, is that doing your genealogy and your family tree can be very addictive because you want to keep seeing if they've made matches to your family tree. And it can be more expensive, too, because yeah. you keep wanting to bump up your membership. So really watch out on cost. OK, great. Thanks, Mel, for doing that. This episode is brought to you by the Baby Names Workbook. The Baby Names Workbook is published by babynames.com and it's available on amazon.com and it actually walks you through narrowing down your favorite names so that you can find the perfect name for your baby. And it's separated by trimester, but it doesn't matter where in the process you are in finding names. It will just help you think of names that you might not have considered in the past and help you name storm with your partner so that you can narrow down your list and find the perfect name for your baby. So that's the Baby Names Workbook by Jennifer Moss and babynames.com, available from amazon.com. Hey, Jen, do you think William and Kate are using the Baby Names Workbook? I hope they are. Now, I recommend that each partner get their own workbook because I believe that both partners should write down their favorite names and come together for specific name storming sessions and kind of bounce names off each other. Now, in Kate and William's case, you know, they've gone with some very traditional names in the past. They went with George and Charlotte. Those are both very traditional. And Charlotte has been on the top of the charts for girls' names. I don't know what they're going to go with for the third baby. They actually have betting odds set up. People are betting on what baby names they're going to use. If it's a boy, I would like to see the boy named Spencer. And now I know Charlotte has Diana in her name. She's Charlotte Elizabeth Diana. But it would be really cool if they also used Diana's maiden name, Spencer. Yeah, I think Spencer's a good name, but I think it's going to be more of a middle name. I think they're going to go with another king name as a beginning. And so what kind of kingly names do you think they'll use, Mal? Well, I think Henry is really one of the names that they're going to use. And I think that they might use Hank as a nickname. Aw, like your cat. Just like my cat. In fact, Hank has been in my dreams lately. Just the other day, I dreamed that Hank was playing three-on-one with the Lakers at the Welshire <laughs> Federal Building. <laughs> well, maybe that's a precognition to the royal baby. Who knows? You never know. Or maybe it's going to be a new Laker. <laughs> maybe. And so, if it's a girl? I think it's going to be more unusual the third time around, even if it honors ancestors. For instance, Elizabeth might be Lizabeth. We'll see. Remember, they are breaking the mold on everything royal. Yeah, they are. Other names in the news, Robin Thicke and girlfriend April Love Geary welcome daughter Mia Love. Love is obviously April's middle name. Too bad they didn't use May. They could have had April May. Oh, that's a good point. That would have been kind of cool. Uh, Josh Charles from The Good Wife and wife Sophie Flack are expecting baby number two. Charles and Flack already have a son who just turned three named Rocco. Ew, I don't like that. Well, it just reminds me of my dog because my dog is Roscoe, but before I adopted him, his name was Rocco. And I thought that was just a little too tough and, you know, UFC fighter for him. So <laughs> I decided to change it to something a little more sophisticated. So now he's Roscoe. What's most exciting, to me at least, is actor Rachel McAdams is pregnant with her first child. Yay! She's been extremely low-key about the pregnancy. She hasn't announced it, but she's been spotted out and about with her boyfriend, Jamie Linden. And one fan said that she appeared to be about seven months along. Um, now, nothing else has been revealed, and I've already got the baby name picked out. So get this. Mm has to be Regina for a girl or George for a boy. That's it. Ugh. 
because, well, you know, mean girls. So says the baby name's Oracle. Now, Regina means queen and George is farmer, but George is a royal name, as we said before. So it's pretty cool nowadays. All right. Well, let's see what she does. We'll see what Rachel does. Okay, now to our Q&A segment. So if you have any questions for us about names or naming or have feedback about the show, hashtag baby names pod. I'm warning you right now, if you want our feedback, we're going to give it to you honestly. Honestly. I'm not very nice. <laughs> Mallory's not very nice. <laughs> um, okay, so our first question is, Dear Jennifer and Mallory, why did you start the website babynames.com and how have name trends changed in the last 22 years since you started the site? Sincerely, Kaylee. Well, that's a good question, Kaylee. Mal, do you want to take part of that? Sure. So Jennifer was always obsessed about, well, lots of things, but <laughs> she was especially obsessed with names. She used to scour the phone book for interesting or funny names. Yep. And then when the internet came out, holy cow, that's when she really started <laughs> going nuts. And what was the name of your first baby doll, Jennifer? Mm, Bing Kong Kunk. Mm-hmm. Bing Kong Kunk. See what I mean? <laughs> is that in our database? It is not in our database because I made it up. But maybe I should put it in our database. That is Bing Kong Kunk. You heard it here first. That's going to shoot to the top of the charts now. Somehow I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I was obsessed with interesting names because my name was just so basic. It was Jennifer and everybody had the same name as me. So I became fascinated with names and people who had unusual names. So how have name trends changed since we started the site? That's a good question. Like I did a presentation at the American Name Society kind of about this. And I truly believe that the internet changed baby naming. Because before the internet, the popular names pretty much stuck around for a long time. Like Jennifer was the number one name for 10 to 12 years. But since the internet, um, the name trends have been changing more quickly. And that's because parents can see what are the most popular names and they try to avoid them. So the frequency of the number one names are changing like every two years and every three years. It, there's more of a turnover. Because nowadays, parents don't want the most popular name. They don't want the new Jennifer where there is five others in the classroom. They want to be a little more unique. So that's how name trends are changing. They're changing more frequently. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So you mean to say that instead of saying more common people want to be more different and unique. They don't want 10 kids named Jaden in the classroom or Hayden or Maiden or Naden. They want to be different than one another. Yeah, and when I went back and looked at the social security stats, in the 1950s, like say 1955, one out of every three boys had a top 10 name. And now... Less than 1% of boys are named a top 10 name. Hmm. Yeah, which is telling you that parents are really trying to be more unique. So we have one more question. Dear baby names, I already used my favorite girl's name on my cat, but now I'm pregnant and I'm having a girl and I want to name my daughter with the same name, Vera. Is it weird to have a cat and a daughter with the same name? Love Cat Lady 93. Cat Lady is right. What is she thinking? That's the most ridiculous thing in the world. Well, Vera is a all, beautiful name. No, I don't like it. I think it's awful, first of all. Vera <laughs> Ick. Second of all, the idea you are a cat lady if you want to name your baby after your cat. You know what? If you name the cat Vera, the cat's name is Vera, and you got to come up with something else with the baby. You know what? If you like it, you can riff off of it. Name the baby Veronica. Ha ha ha. That's the best <laughs> name that you could name a baby. I totally disagree. 
Now, first of all, I think she should use her favorite name for her baby and then just change the cat's name. I just read a study that says that animals are very adaptable when it comes to their names. They will respond to nicknames, and sometimes when somebody adopts a pet, they might not have known their name in a past life. So they create a new name, and pets don't care. So I'd say name your daughter Vera and change the cat's name. So that's our show. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a show. Keep naming those babies.